breaking news. A flood is coming. Lives are at stake. People need to be warned. They need to know the key facts for this emergency. What is the emergency? Where is the affected area? How soon do we need to act? How bad will it be? How certain are the experts? What should we do? CAP is the international standard for communicating those key facts for all types of alerts and across all kinds of media. Picture CAP as a standard business form in paper on a clipboard. Everyone should have at least those key facts communicated by a CAP alert. Alerting authorities embrace CAP because they want alerts to reach everyone in the alerting area or travelers in vehicles. TPEG2 emergency alerts and warnings leverages published CAP alerts. A CAP alert is like a traditional news article, but the key facts are each given in separate elements. And many of those elements give actual data rather than just plain text. The data in CAP are coded values, essential for automated processing, routing, translation, and much more. The text and data of a CAP message are given in XML format, as you can see in this example. Here, the sender name is National Weather Service, Sacramento, California. The headline is Severe Thunderstorm Warning. The description says the storm has hail, intense rain, and strong damaging winds. And the instruction says, take cover in a substantial shelter until the storm passes. Notice the alerting area. So for human readers, the area is described in text, but for automated processing, the area is also given as data, the latitude longitude boundary of a polygon. That XML encoding is essential for sending CAP alerts to in-vehicle navigation systems. Such an alert then enables drivers to avoid danger areas or take other actions as appropriate. Just as news articles are streamed from a news feed, CAP alerts are published as a CAP news feed. Here we see the CAP news feed from the National Weather Service for the County of Los Angeles on the 17th of July. The only active alert was a high surf advisory. The National Weather Service maintains thousands of those CAP news feeds by county and by forecast zone. And for convenience, there's also this aggregate CAP news feed at national scale. Of course, there are many types of hazards other than weather. The U.S. Federal Emergency Management Agency aggregates CAP alerts from more than 1,600 federal, state, local, tribal, and territorial alerting authorities, including that National Weather Service feed. Other large countries have taken the same approach. India's CAP-based system aggregates from villages and cities up through districts and states and on up to the national level. Europe has a similar approach. There's a CAP feed for each of 37 European National Weather Services. These are aggregated in a system called Meteo Alarm. In general, such CAP alert hubs make it easy to get alerts from multiple sources at a single location. This is important because there are already many thousands of CAP alert feeds. Yet the CAP alert hubs provide only a copy of the alert. They do not have the role of an alerting authority. Think of CAP alert hubs as alert publishers rather than alert originators or alert editors. CAP alert hubs at global scale specific to weather include AccuWeather, MedioBlue, Windy.com, and three others that aggregate all types of hazards include Google Public Alerts, the IFRC Alert Hub, and the WMO Alert Hub. Of course, security and authenticity are very important for public alerting systems. People need to know whether any given CAP source is official. The International Register of Alerting Authorities was set up for this purpose. It's operated by the World Meteorological Organization, WMO, which is a treaty level organization. That means those assertions have the force of law in all signatory countries. 
from the home page of the register, I can select the United States, and then I can select NOAA's National Weather Service. So this alerting authority lists that cap feed URL, which is the link I showed earlier. For delivering alerts to in-vehicle navigation systems, it might be wise to avoid bothering drivers with routine emergencies, and you can select only the high priority alerts, which is less than 1% of all CAP alerts. The CAP standard defines three data elements relevant to priority, urgency, how soon, severity, how bad, and certainty, how sure. Most countries are following the U.S. legal definition for high priority alerts. That is when the urgency, severity, and certainty are all at the top two levels which means people must act within one hour, the situation is life-threatening, and the certainty is above 50%. WMO Alert Hub offers the CAP feed URL shown here for exactly that purpose. This URL selects high priority public alerts from official sources across all CAP sources worldwide. And let me conclude by noting the current status of CAP uptake worldwide. About 90% of the world's population now lives in a country with at least one national CAP newsfeed operating or in testing. Those show as green or yellow on this map. The countries in gray haven't yet implemented CAP as far as I know. Again, let me state the essential takeaways. CAP standardizes key facts about any kind of emergency. It is designed for dissemination over all kinds of communication channels. Alerting authorities embrace CAP because they want alerts to reach everyone in the alerting area. For travelers and vehicles, the TPEG-2 EAW leverages published CAP alerts. Here are links to some CAP videos. Feel free to contact me about anything related to CAP.